Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncrate the brand new Arai XD5. One, what's up Speed Addicts fam? Always a big day here when we have a new drop from the folks in Japan. That's right. After about 10 years, Arai has replaced the XD4 with the brand new XD5. But before we get into that, I gotta ask you a few things. Number one, subscribe to the channel. That way you keep getting the first look at the latest and freshest gear in the power sports industry. Appreciate you subscribing right now. Also, if you'd like to support us here at speedaddicts.com, it's as simple as shopping with us. There's a link in the description down there that will take you to the complete selection of Arai XD5 helmets at speedaddicts.com. And for that matter, every Arai available in the United States is available at SpeedX, we're an authorized dealer. You can also check them out in our new superstore in Orange County if you happen to be in California. Okay, so with my ass out of the way, we will check out this new release from Arai. So first off, Arai, their whole philosophy is to operate on first principles. What is a helmet for? Well, it's to protect your head, of course. So safety is always at the core of their mission. And that comes from the top. So the company is privately owned by the Arai family. Mr. Arai uh, makes it his goal to protect the rider first. Could they sell more helmets by chasing trends or doing more dramatic shapes? Yes, but anything that compromises this spherical shape or the helmet's ability to protect you is not going to enter the equation. And for that, I commend Arai, and it's one of the reasons we love the brand here. Okay, so that is the philosophy. So safety is always number one. Now, what was the idea with the new XD5? They're replacing a helmet that was born about 10 years ago which is longer than their normal model life cycle. Now, why did that happen? Well, the world kind of came unglued for a minute during the pandemic, and it put their plans to iterate behind. So here's the XD4, here's the all new XD5. What changed in that decade? Well, most of the dual sport riders who were reaching for this helmet, they changed, they changed what they were riding. So back in the day, if you're on a dual sport, you were on a lower displacement, essentially a dirt bike with a license plate. Those days, well, there are still plenty of those guys out there and gals. There are much or many more riders now on higher displacement touring machines that are doing way more highway miles. I'm looking at you, GS riders, KTM adventure riders, big displacement machines doing higher speeds with windshields involved. And that changes the whole equation for the aerodynamics on a dual sport helmet. So the number thing, number one thing you're going to notice here is that they've totally changed the design of the peak and improved that on road performance. Now what you can expect with Arai is that it is truly professional grade. The difference between this and some lesser helmets is obvious the minute you pick it up and it's hard to exactly convey that through a video, but go to Home Depot, pick up the Ryobi, and then go pick up the Makita. That is the difference we're talking about. I'm sure people are gonna get mad at me with my tool analogy. Now, this comes at a cost, of course. And because this helmet, the XD5, was a complete ground up redesign, there's a lot of cost involved. So previously the XD4, MSRP, uh, while current was in the $600 range, right around 640. The new XD5 is gonna start at an eye-watering 839 for a solid and go up to 997 for the special edition Honda graphic. Yes, that is approaching a comma for a motorcycle helmet and we take that seriously. It is a lot of money, but when it comes to something that is made with this sort of care, this sort of attention to detail in Japan, I mean, that's going to come with a cost. They only use the best materials. There's not anything out of place on a ride. Their quality control is so extreme that they keep the quality control team in a completely separate building so they don't become friends with anybody building the helmets. We can't have that. So they are very serious about these things. And the finished product, if you're someone that likes the best, just because 
things out of place bother you or you know you, you're concerned about safety I mean these are reasons why folks go to Arai but now it performs even better on the dual sport machine so we got the price out of the way in terms of the shell and the resin we have a composite PBCL C2 shell construction Arai uses uh, shell materials that are a variety of different weaves and belts to really make the strongest shell they can and they're using their new Z resin here on the XD5 and the Z resin is stronger and lighter than their older resin so the Z resin is being used in the classic V as well as the contour X and now the new XD5 that is their next gen resin in terms of weight they've managed to keep the weight the same so in this size large that we weighed it was right around 3.6 pounds so three and a half pounds ish depending on the size of the shell and the helmet that you're getting now that z resin is supposed to be lighter but it's probably compensating for some weight that they added in other places for example it does have a more pronounced rear air diffuser package instead of this separated um, one on the XD4 they've gone with a larger single unit but that's just me guessing it's hard to say <clears throat> but three and a half pounds for a dual sport helmet is not bad if I was going to be doing more off-road miles doing more single track more technical riding might I lean towards a helmet that's a little bit lighter perhaps and I might also lean towards a helmet to be honest with you it's a little bit cheaper if I was going to do a lot of single track <clears throat> and I was on a smaller displacement machine I wanted a dual sport helmet that I was going to beat up uh, I might not take my thousand dollar awry but that's just me if I was ripping fire trails and going between you know some fire trails light off-road use and then back onto the pavement for sure all day and they made sure that the helmet while designed to do better on the highway is still flowing a lot of air at those lower speeds now let's talk about safety there are new safety standards out in Europe it's ECE 2206 you probably hear me talk about that quite a bit on this channel if you watch our other videos ECE 2206 is replacing 2205 and there's a lot to talk about the last year about that it's a more strict testing standard and it's really thrown a lot of manufacturers for a loop chasing that new standard and passing a more strict uh, four drop safety testing regimen now when new standards come out awry is never concerned and why is that because they operate on first principle first principles and they're always making the absolute safest helmet they can so the new standards arrive and they go oh yeah it passes that um, now the helmets sold in the states at this moment are going to be dot and snell 2020 d labeled they're not going to carry a third label the ece label not sure why there's probably a cost element but this helmet is passing that in europe and especially what i just heard about the corsair x is that it's even passing not only did it pass fim but it's passing this new fim 2 test that's not coming out to 2206 and the corsair x is like a 10 year old helmet so um, when it comes to safety it's hard to do better uh, than our eye in my book the shape is an intermediate oval head shape they're going to have a combination of five shells and EPS's with four physical shells so more shells is better the shell and EPS are tuned to that size of, and even the weight of your head to protect you and to fit you as well as they absolutely can now the interior when we pull this helmet apart you will notice that the liner and the cheek pads have peel away foam to custom fit there's also different sizes available to purchase my advice to you is going to be to remove the cheek pads and focus on your crown fit because the cheek pads can influence you to move up and down in sizing when you might not have had to you might you because the cheek pads are very adjustable um, so focus on the crown get that right and let that guide the discussion I'll show you how to remove the cheek pads later in terms of sizes you will see extra small through two extra large go by that arise sizing chart and you should nail it if you have trouble you're not sure what size to pick talk to a writer support team phone live chat or emails 
And remember when you shop for helmets at Speed Addicts, you'd never have to really stress because you have the privilege of no cost returns. That's right, no nickel and diming on that return shipping label. We're gonna hook you up with a free return label if you live in the lower 48 states and the helmet's brand new in the original condition to get a different size, a different color, or just your money back, risk-free shopping at Speed Addicts. Okay, let's look at some of the other differences between these two dual sport helmets. The older XD4, they've updated the chin bar venting. We've gone with a larger single vent as opposed to these winglets and that smaller chin vent. But really the most pronounced difference is going to be the peak. So you see this is more of a standard motocross straight across peak where on the new XD5, they have this big relief. They're both adjustable and uh, the main thing they were trying to do with this big relief here is to make the helmet more stable when behind the windscreen of a large touring machine. The complaint on the XD4 was in that scenario. Yeah, some people were getting some vibration, uh, less stability, more noise. That was a problem. Like I said, this was designed for the lower displacement dirt bike style dual sport machines without a windscreen. The next thing, big upgrade, and we'll talk about the shield a lot on the new XD5, but the XD4, this was a, a sheet shield. So it starts life as a flat sheet and then it's, it's, uh, it's cut and then shaped for the helmet. Uh, a more premium option is the new injection molded shield that you can see. You can do a cavity on the inside to hold a pin lock insert, which will be included. You can mold your locking system instead of having a separate piece attached, which can break off. And it's more optically correct when you're looking at it. Some people complained about the old stamp shield being a problem uh, with optics. They have done away with that brow vent and there are now iridium shields available. Okay, more on that in a minute. The other and most significant change, and then we'll get rid of this XD4. Like I said, this is a ground up build and what they've done is that they've shortened the helmet. Instead of that longer motocross chin bar, they've shortened it up. And what that's done is it's made this less narrow and and long, so it fits closer to your face, more like a street helmet, and that is good for a few th few reasons. It's shorter and wider, and when they shorten it and wide, widen the chin bar, the entry of the helmet is much more friendly. Uh, gone are the days of it trying to take off your ears when you're trying to get into it. This is a good thing. It also makes the helmet rounder. And with that, we'll move this away, and we'll talk a little bit about Arise concept with a round or egg-shaped helmet. That's their R75 or their radius. And so when you bring the chin bar in, this helmet's going to glance off things better. Big corners, dramatic shapes on helmets will catch when they're sliding across a surface. So Arise stays away from that. They also make sure that all their trim bits shear off almost instantly when they hit the ground. Does that mean when you hit the door frame when you're walking into your house with your ride, could you bust the trim off easier than other helmets? Perhaps, do they have extra trim they'll help you out with? Yes, absolutely. But I promise you, you want things to shear off. As much as an action camera with adhesive that is too sticky and doesn't come loose when you're on uh, an asphalt surface can grab the helmet and put more G's into your spine and brain and that is a bad thing. So new ground up design means a rounder and hopefully safer helmet for you. Let's talk about ventilation now. So cool thing about their chin bar vent, it is double louvered. So you have a switch in here to um, open the inlet to the exterior and then you have a chin bar uh, switch on the inside. So that gives you different combinations. You can totally shut it down. You can open the exterior vent and close the interior vent and just put air up onto the shield and onto your face, or you can keep them both open and get more of it onto your mouth and up onto the face shield. So it's actually one of the only helmets with the double louver system. It's pretty cool. Very customizable uh, ventilation. I'm going to move this peak out of the way. Yes, you do have to loosen the screws to adjust the peak. More on that in a minute. You have their new fancy logo vent, and it's hard to get the light 
in there just right so you can see it, but the air is gonna flow in through the bottom and uh, the switch is up on the top. This is two position. This is the same vent they're using on the new Contour X and we like it a lot because it gives you a nice big vent without having to put more holes into the bottom lip of the iPort. You notice they say, well, clear that because that is going to compromise the strength of the shell. Uh, you're also gonna get another vent right here on top, which is a three position. And then the rear exhaust here is also three position switchable. So what that means is that pretty much every hole in this helmet can be shut down. Cold weather rider, no problem. I've even heard people talk about uh, taking this out on their sled, I suppose, if it was a warm day and you didn't need the full breath box and that sort of thing. You could do that because you can't shut down everything except for these passive cowl vents here on the bottom edge. Those will remain open unless you tape them. Okay, the peak. I already talked to you about the differences between this peak and the XD4. It's this big relief here. And this was born from some folks at Arai actually cutting different shapes in the XD4 peak to see how they perform. That was some of the early R&D on how they landed on the shape. Of course, wind tunnel testing came next, but you can count this helmet to be stable at speed on larger displacement machines on the highway. It's also actually going to put a shadow onto your face shield and your eyes, which is the whole point of it. A lot of dual sport helmets do not perform very well in the aspect. It's mostly a decorative piece. And all that's going to do is ruin your arrow, pull on your head, all that sort of stuff. And it's not gonna give you any actual performance. Not here with the Arai. Not only is it more pronounced and going to give you good coverage, some other brands try to get around that by putting extenders and extra pieces and all this kind of stuff, which I don't love. Instead, they actually make it pronounced, they've shaped it right so it doesn't pull, and then it is adjustable. So you loosen the screw on the, on the side and you have adjustability from way down yonder to up that high. So that is a lot of range, one more time, all the way down and then all the way up. This is nice, most dual sport helmets do not have that sort of adjustability. And of course, this is meant to shear off in an accident as well. You can run it with or without the peak. You can run it with or without the face shield. You wanna go in motocross mode, you can remove the face shield, keep the peak and put goggles in. Can you run goggles and eyeglasses with the face shield in place? Yes, you can. So there are lots of combination. You can even close this face shield over goggles if you needed to do that, as long as the goggle strap is not too tight. <clears throat> so it is all sorts of helmets in one. Let's show you how to remove the peak and the side cover. This is probably the, um, gosh, the most challenging part of this helmet is going to be this replacement. Uh, that was a big sigh there. It's not that bad. After you do it a few times, you will have it down. So here we are. Maybe producer Matt can zoom us out a little bit so we can see this. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open the shield and then we're gonna go ahead and hit that release. And it's that easy to take off. There we go, thank you. So. It's that easy to take off. We're gonna do it one side at a time. And there it is as well. Okay, so now we're off. If you want the face shield off, you're gonna go all the way, whoops. We already came out of our channel here. You're gonna go all the way to the bottom of that groove and this brass fitting is gonna come out. Then you can swap the shield. Like I said, there's now iridium shields available. There were not for the XD4. For the XD4, you can only get light smoke and light smoke. Now, in addition to smoke, light smoke, you're gonna have different iridium options, red, silver, and I think there are a few others. I've also been told transition photochromic is in R&D, and hopefully sooner than later, we will see that come out. All right, so when you're ready to reinstall your shield, you're gonna put the brass ring in this little itty bitty hole right here. There it is. And we're gonna bring this down oops, to that first detent. Now you're ready to reinstall your peak. Now, if you wanna run it without the peak, you're going to undo this screw. You're gonna remove the peak and keep this exterior cover and the interior cover and sandwich those together and then just install that one piece uh, or that combo piece onto the helmet and then you can run it as more of a traditional full face helmet. They sell these separately. You can buy an extra set. That way you're not fooling around with undoing these bits. 
if you're the type that's going back and forth a lot. Otherwise, you can do it with what you're shipped in the box. Okay, so we need to open this up to that position. Not all, if you keep going at this point, the face shield's gonna come off. So you're gonna open it up to right about there. And then there is a little pocket here and a pocket here that correspond with tabs on the inside that I can see from here, but you can't. So once you get things lined up, whoops, which is easier to do from here, let's see. You're gonna get those two tabs lined up and once they're lined up in the right position, it's gonna click in real quick like that. So one more time. All right, one more, there it is, okay. Oh, I missed one of the tabs. There it is. Okay, so I've changed a lot of helmets out there before it's, uh, as far as their side covers go. Um, Arise have been challenging in the past. Most of the street helmets are still a little challenging, but not quite as challenging as this because it's a big peak and it's one piece, but you're doing each side separately. So you gotta wrestle with it just a touch. Um, yeah, you will figure it out after you do it a few times. It's not too bad. We'll probably release a video on just how to do shield changes and deal with the peak. Now the shield is brand new. Injection molded now includes a pin lock insert in the box, which is great considering the price tag here. I don't have the pin lock insert to show you, but what that is is an interior lens makes a dual pane system for you to reduce or mitigate fog. Also, instead of that two piece lock, they now have a single fin here that's part of the injection molding process to lock this down. And in terms of riding positions, the detents are large. So here's your first demiss setting. If you want that kind of right off the lock, you can do that. And then here's your first detent and your second one. So there's not, it's not like a ratcheting system, okay? Uh, that is all the way up. In terms of comm systems, the helmet's now more comm system friendly. You notice they've moved their hyper ridge up out of the way to make room for your comm system. They also made the base for the speakers 10 millimeter wider to accommodate the larger pack talk JBL speakers, which a lot of you are running out there. So comm systems will no longer be an issue. You notice with the old helmet, we had the signature Arai Hyper Ridge right here, which actually helps the rigidity of that bottom opening because this is the, uh, from what I understand, this is the weakest or the most vulnerable, I guess is the word to use, part of the shell is where it's open, right? So they put this Hyper Ridge, it's an engineering trick, but that interfered with comm systems. So they've redesigned how that Hyper Ridge falls on the helmet and they brought it up a little bit. Okay, let's climb inside of the new XD5 here and show you the goods. So we have a chin spoiler. It's not a full curtain, but it kind of does that same job. Now, if you want the extended chin curtain, it is available but sold separately, and that will give you mega coverage and really cut down on noise. So if you're doing a lot of miles, especially those highway miles, and you wanna keep the noise out, buy that extended chin curtain, it's gonna add on to that spoiler. That is a good thing. Emergency release cheek pads. Uh, of course, EMS could use these little pull tabs to get you out of the helmet if they need to. Now, we're going to break down this entire interior and show you all of the special goodies in here. Neck roll, first thing, you can take the neck roll off by sliding it. Actually, it's better if the cheek pads are out of the way first. So the cheek pads on the XD5, you're gonna pull the back. There's actually a tab on the front edge that is tucked inside of the chin bar pad. So what we need to do is pull up and out from the rear here. So if I go ahead and grab this, I'll pull it up and, oh, sorry. There's also the first thing you need to do, and this is tricky, I forgot already. Uh, we have a Velcro pad for your speakers in that speaker pocket that needs to be removed. Otherwise, it's gonna hold the cheek pad against the rest of the EPS and make it more challenging to come out. So let's remove these on either side before I forget. Okay, there we are. So that's for a comm system install, but they come from the factory, which is unusual for helmets. Okay, so now we can pull that back edge. I 
grabbed inside the cheek pad and I'm pulling the cheek pads towards the chin bar and remove the rear. So the rear is gonna fall in. Now they have a tab that's underneath that chin bar pad. There it is, okay? So you're gonna remove that. And this is how I recommend if you feel confident enough to do that without wrecking the helmet. <laughs> this is how we recommend you fit the helmet. Remove the cheek pads first, just leave the comfort liner in there, focus on that crown, and then we can adjust your cheek pads. More on that in a second. Okay, we're gonna do the next one. Same situation here. If you're ever wondering, your born on date for your right helmet is stamped on the, uh, the D rings, by the way. Okay, now with the cheek pads out of the way, we can remove the neck roll. The neck roll you grab and twist, and then it should come right out. On the neck roll, we have a couple of vents, but this also could be a handy area to stash some wires from your comm system, these little pockets here. All right, the neck roll is out of the way. With the neck roll out of the way, you can see the second double louver vent here on the chin bar. They have a new fastener for the chin strap covers on there. It's a plastic system that you can just kind of wiggle out if you want to wash these. Now, if you're gonna take this helmet off road, it's gonna get uh, properly dirty. You can actually get the inside of your helmet wet. I would do it with your hands and very light detergent when it comes to washing anything on the inside of an Arai helmet or the outside of that matter. Don't use anything stronger than you would put on your body, okay? So if you wanna use just a little bit of shampoo or something like that, that is the way to clean these pads. Do it in the sink. Don't put them in a washing machine or anything crazy like that. Now, you do have a layer of foam you can remove here. You're gonna take the sock off and if this helmet or if the cheek pads is squeezing you too much, you can remove a layer of foam here. You actually have two layers. So you can adjust that. If that sort of minor adjustment by making it smaller is not what you need, you want thicker, then you need to purchase a new set of cheek pads and we can help you do that. Uh, the size of the cheek pad is noted under here. These are 20 millimeters. And that was another change compared to the old XD4. It had, it had to have a thinner cheek pad because it was that narrower, longer motocross style chin bar. And because of that, there wasn't as much adjustment. You were starting with a thinner cheek pad out of the box, so you couldn't remove layers like this. So more uh, customization is available. Let's go ahead and remove the interior comfort liner, and then you'll be able to see the multi-density one-piece EPS from Arai. Now, the way that they install a one-piece EPS is a closely guarded trade secret. What you'll notice in most motorcycle helmets is that there are seams all over their EPS. Sorry, I'm moving that around a lot. There are seams all over there. You see this is all one piece. The seams make it multi-piece in other brands and it's more easy to put that together inside of the helmet awry. I don't know what they do. They use uh, some, some pan cooking oil to slip this in there uh, as one piece, but the seams are not gonna perform as well as an impact. So they want to stay away from seams if they can, and thus the one piece uh, EPS. It's just one of those many things a ride does differently that add up to make the helmet just perform that much better. There are holes in there, but there are no channels. That's another thing that a ride does differently than some other brands. The channels is actually going to remove EPS. Less EPS is less energy absorption, so they don't do channels. Instead, what Arai does is they use this kind of foam snowflake here on the top that is going to keep your head off that EPS and allow the airflow to come in through those ducts and circulate for you. Now, this headliner is probably the most one of the most complicated headliners on the market. By complicated, I mean like engineered to be adjustable, and so there is some complication. You can adjust, uh, there's two different, or I think there's three settings here. Yeah, there's three settings on the tension of the headliner. So you can actually relax that tension and actually, for some people, uh, make the helmet fit larger by dropping this down. And then you have four different places where you can remove material. If you need the helmet to fit longer, you can remove material from this little cutout in the smiley face. There's one layer you can remove here. You can remove the foam from the bottom edge if you've got a big neck in the back there. 
And then you can remove material from the sides. If you have a rounder head that's getting pressure on the sides, you can go ahead and remove a strip right here and a strip on the other side. There are also different thicknesses available. So if that sort of fine adjustment is not doing the job for you, then you can talk to our team and get a different liner. Okay, comfort liner is wicking, antimicrobial, all that sort of good stuff. There's the EPS. I think that about does it. My goodness, there's a lot to talk about with Arai because they obsess over every detail, decades of experience going into making the most functional and safest helmet that they can over there. Five year warranty to protect your investment. That's nice considering the price tag here. By the way, that price tag, it's worth noting that we have several buy now, pay later options. You can split a payment on an Arai helmet into several chunks. If that makes it easier to swallow, I know it does for me. That's it. You still got questions. Rider support team is standing by to help you over the phone, email, or live chat. That's it for today. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.